So it feels like everybody is pushing 5G. 5G, 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 5G. 5G. 5G so that we can stream movies faster and download games quicker. But wait a minute. I think we heard the same pitch before. With 4G from Sprint, I can download files up to 10 times faster than 3G. If we jump back to a time when Quick was the app that you'd use to video chat and kickstands were built into phones. Yo guys, it's Dave here, and let's jump back to the HTC Evo 4G. The year is 2010. TikTok was the name of Kesha's number one song in the billboards. Mark Zuckerberg will be named Time Magazine's Person of the Year. And everyone was still using Foursquare to alert everybody about their whereabouts. It was also during this time that this quirky 14 year old kid would start a YouTube channel called Open Source Gangster talking about Android phones. If you know this for y'all people out there who have Freyo, Android 2.2, that is, you notice. Know and a phone that myself, along with most of the Android community, was obsessed with back in the summer of 2010 was the HTC Evo 4G. It closely resembled his older cousin, the HTC HD2, but we'll save that for another video. So the Evo 4G was the phone that got me first obsessed with Android. And I remember back in the summer of 2010, going to Radio Shack every day trying to find this device because it was constantly sold out. But the thing that made the HTC Evo 4G truly stand out was a gigantic 4.3 inch display. Yeah, I know, 4.3 inches is tiny by today's standards, but back then this was considered huge. I remember how my friends would joke that I'm holding a TV instead of a phone. And the Evo 4G was the first 4G enabled phone available in the United States. It was sold by Sprint, who is now owned by T-Mobile. However, the Evo 4G didn't use the same 4G technology that we use in phones today. It used a different standard called WiMAX. So WiMAX is a nickname for the 802.16 family of wireless standards that deal with broadband on a metropolitan scale. WiMAX was set to be deployed nationwide in the United States by a company called Clearwire. Now, the problem really with WiMAX was that it was almost dead on arrival. See, LTE was just finalized a year before and carriers kind of preferred LTE over WiMAX. LTE was just a cheaper investment. It didn't require a whole new infrastructure like WiMAX did. Now, as to why Sprint went with WiMAX, I'm not really even too sure, but ultimately, at the end of the day, LTE won the 4G battle. But back then, I don't think 4G mattered that much to your average consumer. We definitely didn't stream or download as much content as what we do today. So the Evo 4G ran Android 2.2, also known as Android Freyo. And this is back during the Wild West days of Android back during the days when you had to root your device just to get the flashlight to work. Oh, and we are in clockwork. Oh my God, it worked. Ooh, okay, that's nice to know. Lock screen. So we, I have all these options for lock screen to apply. And so the Evo 4G didn't run stock Android. It ran a skin on top of Android called HTC Sense. And this gave it a polished look, at least compared to TouchWiz back in the day. It gave it its now infamous clock and social feeds widgets. All right, so you might be noticing in this video that I'm not showing any of the internet capable features of this device. Now, the Evo 4G does have Wi-Fi and it can connect to my router, but the only problem is no sites actually work. So this is because the root SSL certificate issued by Let's Encrypt, which is used by many websites, expired back in 2021. So basically, most of the internet enabled services on this device simply won't work. No Google Play services, no YouTube, nothing. I would say that the Evo 4G came at a critical point for Android. It was during a time when everyone was still obsessed with the iPhone and Android was this weird stepchild that nobody talked about. And if you had an Android, people were like, what's, what's wrong with you? Why don't you have an iPhone? What? What is that? Is it an iPhone? No, it is that 4G phone on Sprint. If it's not an iPhone, why would I want it? But I would say for me, the Evo 4G represents a time in the Android ecosystem when you could do anything. The sky was the limit. Heck, you can even play Farmville on your device. This was pretty cool back in 2010. And also other flashlights come up really good too. I mean, just demonstrating some of the flash that comes with uh, Android devices and specifically on Android 2.2, the frail update. 
So the Evo 4G had it all except for battery life. This phone suffered a lot when it came to battery. You would barely get more than three hours max of screen on time before it needing to charge. But hey, at least you can actually replace the battery, a convenience lost by phones today. And that's not the only trick that this phone had. The Evo 4G came with a micro HDMI port, so you can even connect it to your TV. But it oddly does not work when I tried it on my TV today. And that micro HDMI port was also responsible for the infamous 30 FPS issue that the HD Evo 4G had. Basically, HTC locked the phone to 30 FPS just because the HDMI can only output 30 FPS. A terrible solution to a problem that was fixed by the developer community. But the cameras on the Evo 4G were very impressive for their time. The 8 megapixel rear camera took pretty decent photos and was definitely one of the selling points of this device. Now, the front facing camera, it was only a 1.3 megapixel fixed focus camera, but this was pretty big for the time because the Evo 4G was the first US Android smartphone to have a front facing camera. And what was also big was that it allowed you to do video calling over mobile data, something that even the iPhone 4 couldn't do. So listen, there's a lot that we can talk about when it comes to this device or even with HTC. I mean, we could talk about how HTC went from the king of Android smartphones to whose last phone was some kind of odd blockchain crypto phone. But I want to end this on some good nostalgia. The Evo 4G was a device that thrived thanks to the open source community that was dedicated to making the device better than what HTC left it. And for that, it really to me represents what Android is. A community of users, developers, everyone coming together and just trying to make great software and software that allows people to use the device the way they want it to do. And that's why I think the Evo 4G was truly a quietly brilliant device. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. Let me know what you think about this video if you like this format. I'm, I'm looking to do some renovations to this channel and to change things up a bit. Um, so I'll keep you posted with what's going on. I definitely appreciate all your feedback. Let me know what I can do better in the next video. Um, and let me know if you have any ideas for things that you want to see. So you know, as always, thank you for watching and stay tuned for another galvanizing video. Thanks.